have had such a bumper crop of tomatoes this year. We've had more tomatoes come on in our garden actually than ever before. So we are elbows deep in preserving them right now because we just can't eat all of them fresh. And while I really love canning tomatoes, and we actually plant a lot of paste tomatoes specifically because they're great for canning. They're really meaty um, and they make for, you know, really good sauce and salsa and diced tomatoes and all those good things. Um, we also grew a number of cherry tomato plants this year and while I absolutely love fresh cherry tomatoes, we have way too many <laughs> to be able to eat fresh and we've already given a whole bunch away too. So. I've taken to preserving them and the best way that I've found how to do this is actually by sun drying them. So today I'm going to show you how I do that. Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you a really easy way to preserve tomatoes and actually we're going to be preserving cherry tomatoes today. And so tomatoes, of course, lend themselves to lots of different styles of preserving. Um, canning is probably the most popular. And to be honest, we throw all of our paste tomatoes in the freezer um, because they're actually easier to process once they've gone into the freezer. And then you pull them out and you can run them under hot water and the skins slip off. And then you can um, process the flesh and turn them into sauces and salsas and all sorts of good things. But we've got a whole bunch of cherry tomatoes as well. And they, of course, are not as meaty. They're a little bit seedier. They're smaller. Um, so we don't bother with canning them. Uh, but we've got too many to eat fresh. So what I've found is the best way to preserve them is actually by drying them. Now, we do have a dehydrator. But I've tried them in the dehydrator before. And they're good. They're OK. But I've actually tried sun drying them. So literally out in the sun, laid out in the sun, and I find that the flavor is just a little bit better. I don't know what it is about it, but it literally, to me, it tastes like it's been infused with the sun. And so I prefer to uh, sun dry my tomatoes the traditional way, which is literally in the sun. So of course you can use a dehydrator if you have one. You could uh, use your oven on a super low setting, but if you are getting a lot of sunny weather and you've got a whole bunch of tomatoes coming on, whether they're cherry tomatoes or they're a larger variety, you can actually sun dry them the traditional way as well. And it's super, super easy to do. So I want to show you how we do that. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to prepare my tomatoes. So I've got to cut them up. Um, so I usually with the cherry tomatoes, I cut them into about thirds. So you want to go, oh, probably about a quarter inch thickness. So of course, if you've got larger tomatoes, um, you'll probably cut them into more pieces than thirds, but that's about the thickness that I want my tomatoes to be to sun dry them. And so you don't want them too, too thin, otherwise, otherwise they can get almost um, like a little bit too crispy, a little bit too, too thin. But if they're too thick, then they won't dry out as well. So you kind of want that sweet spot where they're still going to be kind of chewy and like the sun dried tomatoes you buy at the store. So I've got a tray from my dehydrator. So I've got a screen. Now you could just use any type of screen really. Just make sure that it's clean first if you're using like a window screen or something like that. But I've got uh, my dehydrator trays. So you want to have a screen or something that's just going to allow air to pass through from the bottom and the top so that they don't um, go moldy or anything like that. So just something with really good airflow. So I'm using my dehydrator screens. I'm going to lay them out like this. I'm just going to prepare all my tomatoes and lay them out. tray full of tomatoes. Now I should have mentioned that before you uh, prepare your tomatoes, you should wash them. Um, I didn't. I'm not a big stickler for that, especially when we're drying them. Um, more so when we're canning and things like that, you want to make sure that everything is really sanitary, but a little dirt can't hurt you, especially when you're um, dehydrating them. So I didn't bother to wash these, but 
just disclaimer, you should. So um, make sure that they're nice and clean before you start. And then I've got them now all laid out on my tray. Now I did mention to put them on a screen or something that's gonna get really good airflow. If you do not have a screen, you absolutely can't use a screen for whatever reason, my next best suggestion would be to use a baking tray lined with some parchment paper, but I would check on them pretty regularly every, you know, three, four hours at the most and turn them just to make sure that that underside isn't getting moldy and that they're drying evenly because having that airflow from both sides is what's really going to allow them to dry evenly and, um, and yeah, make sure that you don't have any issues with mold or anything like that. So I've got mine all laid out on my tray now. I'm going to pop them outside in the sun. I'm gonna bring a little bit of salt with me. I use pink Himalayan salt, but you can use sea salt as well. So we're gonna just head outside and go place them out in the sun. going to kind of dust them with a little bit of salt. Now you don't even need to use salt, but I find that adding the salt gives them a really nice flavor when they're dried. Don't overdo it because you don't want it to be too, too salty. But I kind of just dust it over and make sure that there's a little bit of salt on all of them. Okay, and that's pretty much it. You're really just gonna leave them out now. Um, I usually leave mine out for a couple days. So what I do is I have them out in the sun for the day, I bring them in in the evening, um, and then I put them back out in the morning. And this whole process usually takes about two, maybe sometimes up to three days. Now, if you're having a major issue with bugs and flies getting at them, you can um, put a little bit of cheesecloth over top. I've done that before. Or you can put another screen, as long as the screen is not resting directly on them. You need to prop it up around the side. Um, but I, for myself, I don't really mind. We don't have too much of a problem with bugs or anything, so I just leave them out just like this. Now, just to give you an idea, these are some tomatoes that I've had out drying for the for yesterday. So they were out all day yesterday, and then I'm gonna leave them till the end of the day. And as you can see, they're getting, um, they're, they're drying out pretty well. They're not quite 100% dry yet. They can use till the end of the day, but they're coming along really nicely. So that's kind of what they look like after a couple days out in the sun. And then if you want to come back inside, I will show you what they look like when they're completely dried. Okay, so this is a jar of sun-dried tomatoes that I made a couple weeks ago. So this is what they look like when they're completely dried. So they're completely dried out. So they're safe to store in a jar. And what I do is I actually put one of these air absorber packs in. Um, so I save these when they come with various products, shoes, things like that. I save these um, so that I can put them in with my dehydrated food just as an extra precautionary measure just to make sure that um, we don't have any problems with mold or anything but if they're truly dehydrated which they are you shouldn't have a problem now you can put your um, sun-dried tomatoes in oil if you like just like you would buy at the store but I would recommend that if you do that you keep them in the fridge because there is still a risk of that oil going rancid. There is a small risk of botulism even though um, your tomatoes are dried out uh, so I would, it's just not worth the, the risk for me. So we are going to do a jar of them in oil with some herbs and things like that, but we're going to keep that one in the fridge. For preserving and making it shelf stable, I would recommend just leaving them dried and putting them in a jar like this. And from there, you can use these in any recipe that calls for sun-dried tomatoes. We like to put them on top of pizza, in pasta, things like that. Um, yeah, and there you go, sun-dried tomatoes, super easy, it doesn't require any special equipment, just the sun. So, if you like this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe below for more updates from the House and Homestead.